In section 6.1, we will talk about exponential functions. But before we talk about exponential functions, let's take a look at the difference between linear and exponential functions. In a linear function, the rate of change is constant, which is also known as a slope. So we have a constant rate of change. Oops. For example, uh, this data is from the 2019-2020 salary schedule from a local school district. A high school teacher makes $61,736 in the first year of teaching and gets an automatic raise of $31.94 per year. So in the first year, the teacher makes $61,736. In year two, they get a, 30, a raise of $31.94. So in year two, they're making $64,930. In year three, they get another raise of $31.94. That's $68,124. Year four, they get another raise of $31.94. That's $71,318. So if we graph this, and this represents the teacher's salary when they first start, which is 61,736, then in, this, in the second year of teaching, the salary increases to be 64,930, which is here. Then in the following year, the salary increases to 68,124, which is right there. The following year, the salary increases to be 71,318, which is right there. So we can see that the growth is linear. Every year, the salary is growing by the exact same amount. And when we have linear growth, uh, this is a constant rate of change. And this is called a linear function. Let's look at an exponential function. In an, in an exponential function, there is exponential growth or decay based on a percent of the original amount. So in an exponential function, the growth isn't linear. The growth, we don't grow or decrease by the same amount. We grow by an exponential amount. Okay, so let's take a look at, the, uh, the, this is real data from the number of COVID-19 cases in the US by date reported. Um, on January 22nd, 2020, there was one reported case. On the 29th, there were five the 20th there were 11 so let's look at the growth so from 22nd to 29th there were there was a growth of four cases from the 29th through february 5th there was a growth of 11 cases note that the growth is in constant it's it's changing from uh february 5th to february 12th there was only one case the one new case reported now there were we know now that there were many more but only one was reported then from the 12th to the 19th, there, there was one more additional case. From 13th to the 15th, there were two additional cases. Now, from the from the 26th through March 4th, we went from 15 reported cases to 98. So let's take a look at that. If we take 98 minus 15, we went from two additional cases to 83 additional cases. Then from March 4th to 11, we went from 98 cases to 1215. So we have, we have 1215 minus 98. That's a growth of 1,117 cases. Now look at look at the difference between March 25th and April 1st. On April 1st, there were 213,144 reported cases, and then uh, on uh, March 25th, there were 16, uh, 68,440. So the difference here between those two is 144,000. 704. So what's happening is that the number of cases isn't growing by a constant amount, it's growing by an exponential amount. So therefore, this is an example of, an ex of ex exponential growth. And if we were to graph this, our graph is going to look something like this. Okay, and this graph represents the graph of an exponential function. So for example, let's graph the function f of x equals 2x. If you graph this function, and this is again highlighting the difference between a linear versus an exponential function. So this first function, f of x equals 2x, this is a linear function. So uh, if we fill in the, the values and we graph it, we get a straight line. And if you look at how the, value, the y values are changing, they're always changing by 2 always changing by two. The, the, the rate of change is two. Why? Because we have a slope of two. So we're changing by a rate of two. Um, two. Zero to two, two to four, four to six, four to eight. But 
if we graph the function f of x equals 2x, let's look at the rate of change. Here, the rate of change is 0.25. Here, the rate of change is 0.5. Here, the rate of change is 1. Here, it's 2. Here, it's 4. Here, it's 8. So the rate of change is in constant, like in the first example. We have a constant rate of change. Here, the rate of change is not constant, making this an exponential function. And look at the graphs of the two as well. They are very different. Now, an exponential function is in the form of f of x equals to a times b to the x power, where a is the initial or starting value, and b is a growth or decay factor. Okay, So b is a growth or decay factor. Now, b is always going to be greater than 0, and b will never equal to 1, because if b is 1, then we don't have any kind of growth or decay. So if we have exponential growth, b is equal to 1 plus r, where r is a rate of growth. For exponential decay, b is equal to 1 minus r. So to simplify this a little bit, or to explain this a little bit more, um, when we have exponential growth, the function is going to be f of x equals to a, which is the initial value, times 1 plus r to the uh, x power, where x is the number of years, or x is time. And for decay, we have f of x equals to a times 1 minus r to the x power. So 1 plus r, so if the b value is greater than 1, it means we have exponential growth. If b is between 0 and 1, that means we have exponential decay. Because when b is between 0 and 1, we have the case of 1 minus r, that's decay. When b is greater than 1, we have the case of 1 plus r, that's going to be exponential growth. So here's an example. Uh, a population numbers 15,000 organisms initially and decreases, so here is we have a key, key phrase, decreases by 6.5% each year. Suppose p represents a population and t is the number of years after uh, years of growth, write an exponential model for the population. So our population is going to be based on a, the initial amount. So the initial amount is 15,000. Okay, now because we have decay, for exponential decay, the function is going to be one minus r raised to the t power. Now, what is the rate of decay? That's 6.5%. So 6.5% in decimal form, there are two ways to convert a percent to a decimal. One is just move the decimal point two spaces to the left, or the other method is to divide by 100 and remove the percent sign, which will give you 0 0.065. So the rate of decay is going to be 0 0.065. So our, our, our function is going to be the population equals to 15,000, that is the initial amount, times 1 minus 0 0.065 raised to the, the t power. And uh, if we simplify this, 1 minus 0 0.065, this equals to 0.935. So we have 15,000 times 0.935 to the t power. And notice that when the b value is between 0 and 1, we have an exponential decay. If it was greater than 1, we would have exponential growth. The fox population in a certain region has an annual growth rate of 5% per year. So now this time, we have a growth rate. It is estimated that the population in 2000 was 21,300. So first off, we want to write a function uh, for t years after 2000. So remember, this, this is the number of years after 2000. So in 2000, t is equal to 0. So our population is going to be given by the initial uh, population, which is 21,300 times. We got, now in this case, we have exponential growth because we got a growth rate. So it's going to be 1 plus r to the t power. Now, what is our, our, our rate of growth? It's 5%. So if we take 5% and divide that by 100, we get 0.05. So the, the, the rate of growth is 0.05, 
which means uh, the population can be modeled by the formula 21,300 times 1.05, because 1 plus 0 0.05 is 1.05, raised to the t power. Now, use a function in part A to estimate the fox population in the year 2008. So first, we got to figure out what is the value of t. Now, remember, t is a number of years after 2000. So we got to figure out in 2008 how many years have passed since 2000. So if you take 2008 minus 2000, that's going to be eight years have passed since 2000. So remember, our time starts at 2000. So in 2008, t is equal to 8 because eight years have passed. So our population is going to be the initial population, which is 21,300 times 1.05 because we have a growth. And any time we have a, a b value greater than 1, that's going to be exponential growth. And that's going to be raised to the 8th power. Now we're going to plug this into a calculator. So we got 21,300 times 1.05 raised to the 8th power. And we get 31,469.8. But of course, we can't have 0.8 of a, of a fox. So we're going to rhyme this to 31,470 foxes. OK, so remember these two formulas. a times 1 plus r to the x if we have an exponential growth, or a times 1 minus r to the x if we have exponential decay. Okay, and the next one, it says an adult takes 400 milligrams of ibuprofen each hour. The amount of ibuprofen in a person's system decreases by 29%. So we know that because uh, this decreases by a certain percent, we're going to have this case A times 1 minus R raised to the T power. Okay, T is just time. So the question is how much ibuprofen is left after six hours? So first, let's write the equation. And our equation is going to be like this. It's going to be um, the amount left... So you can use whatever variable. I'm going to use A. The amount left equals to the initial amount, which is 400. So that's your A value times 1 minus R. So our, our, our rate of decay is 29%, which is going to be 0.29. And then raised to the sixth power, because the time T is equal to 6 hours. Okay, so now all we have to do is plug this in. We got 400 times 1 minus 0 0.29 raised to the sixth power. And that gives you 51.24 um, milligrams of ibuprofen. And make sure your final answer always has units attached. Okay, uh, next example says a function has. Uh, is in the form a equal f of x equals to a to the a times b to the x passes to the point 0, 2, and 2, 8. Uh, what are the values of a and b? So first off, we know that a, this is always going to be the initial value. And for the initial value, um, the x has to be 0. So when x is 0, we're given that y is 2. So that's great. We know that when, when uh, the time is 0, our initial value is 2. So we're going to say that our function f of x equals to the initial value, which is 2, times b to the x. Now we're going to plug in the second point, 2, comma 8. So we're going to say that 8 equals to 2 times b. Now when y is 8, uh, x is 2, b squared. So I plugged in x equals to 2, and I plugged in f of x or y equals to 8. And my initial value is 2 because my initial value always occurs when a is equal to, or x is equal to 0. So now I divide both sides by 2, so this gives me 4 equals to b squared. Um, if 4 equals to b squared, and I square root both sides, then I'm going to get b is equal to positive 2. So my function is going to be f of x equals to positive 2 times b. Um, or sorry, b is 2, so it's going to be positive. So a is also 2, it's kind of confusing. a is also 2, b is also 2, so it's going to be 2 times 2 to the x power. Okay, uh, the next example we will do in class.